You know that your rat problem in your barn is bad when you go out there one night to check on something, flip on the light, look in your chicken coop, and it literally looks like the ground is moving. It was that bad. So that was about a month ago we started dealing with this rat problem. So we're gonna share with you what we tried and what's worked for us. winter, Jim started noticing little holes being dug into our chicken coop and you know we didn't really think anything of it. We've never had a huge rodent problem or really a rodent problem at all in our barn and so we thought eh, there might be a few mice around but that happens. There's mice in barns and not really that big of a deal. So we didn't do anything about it um, and, and over time throughout the winter I think you noticed started getting a little bit worse, but we had a lot going on, right? So we were pregnant and due with our fourth baby at any point, and then I broke my leg, and life was chaos, and we were really just trying to survive when Jim had this experience of heading out to our barn, seeing the floor move, and realizing we had rats, and we had a lot of them. Yeah, so it, it really just got out of control quick, and like Joel said, you know, we just, we had a lot going on in our life, so... I didn't want to deal with rats and rodents at the time, but it got out of hand and like those little, you know, what was like one or two little holes at the beginning quickly turned into this whole like cavernous tunnel system that ran all throughout our whole barn and it was, that was awful and I don't know if the rats just like reproduced that quickly or if they called in like all their extended relatives and said, hey, come on over, we got a sweet deal here. But it, you know, it was out of hand. Yeah. 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 So we knew we needed to take action and we knew we needed to take action fast. But we didn't really know what we were doing. And so we we wanted to avoid poison because we, you know, the rats kind of lived in the same space as where our chickens were. So we didn't want, you know, if we could avoid it, we wanted to. And especially if uh, our dog is also there. So if a chicken or our dog came across, you know, poisoned rat, we didn't want... We didn't want them to, to also get killed in the process. And so we were trying to avoid poison, if at all possible. And the other thing was that we don't have barn cats. So Jim is not a cat guy. He's never been too excited about the prospect of cats. And at this point, with a new baby, a broken leg, we just didn't really feel like we were in a position to go get some cats. It, you know, another th thing to take care of. Kind of or not really take care of, but to have and One to more get, thing, yeah. yeah, like right at this moment in our lives. Maybe we will in the future, but yeah. yeah. So we wanted to find another method to eradicate the rats other than those things. Yeah, and two other things that we tried that just, you know, our, we're on our scale, we're not gonna cut it, was one, just like your standard rat traps. Think like a, you know, mouse trap, but, but larger for a rat. And that, like I tried it for like two weeks. I set that thing out every night where I knew the rats were. I got one rat. It didn't do, wasn't gonna cut it. <laughs> um, and then there's like different aroma deterrents that are out there. You can use like essential oils and different things. So we picked up, there's a pack of, I think it's called like Fresh Cab. You can buy it at the store. I picked up some of those, put them around. It maybe stirred things up. Like I think they might've, you know, relocated them to a different spot in the barn for a couple days, but it's just not, unless I had, you know, like a hundred or more of those things all throughout our whole barn, they're made for like a, the cab of a car. So it's not yeah. gonna cut it in that big of a space. Yeah, so meanwhile, while we're trying some of these early measures, we also realized, right, the rats were going after our chickens' food. And so the first thing we did was, um, you know, the chickens would eat the feed during the day, at night, the rats would come in, eat the food, so that was a problem. So we started taking the chickens' feed out at night, um, and quickly the rats learned where we kept the feed inside of our animal trailer, and they started helping themselves to ripping open those bags of feed and Yeah, that was that. pretty awesome. <laughs> awful. We had like 15 bags of feed stored in there. And of course they don't just go after one bag. They rip open like every bag and you know, spill it everywhere and it's a big mess and I had to tape up all the bags and relocate them all to our garage and that was an ordeal. Yeah, so after just removing their food during the, uh, at night, at night, then we started moving their feed, the chickens feed outside, which that has been helpful. Um, it has, we've noticed some rats kind of coming out during the day, but not nearly as much. Um, but in the meantime, we've moved the feed out and then we've been trying some other things to get rid of the rat that have been more effective. Yeah. 
So we did a little more, bit more research into it and came across what's called the baking soda method. And so basically the idea is you can mix baking soda, like a 50-50 mixture of baking soda with cornmeal and sugar. So if you do like say one, one cup of baking soda, you mix it with a half cup of sugar, a half cup of cornmeal, and you put it in like a little container that rats can get into and they eat this stuff up because of the sugar, they go crazy over it. And then what happens is the baking soda reacts with the acid inside their stomach. It like fizzes and bubbles up. And I guess, you know, one of the things we learned is that rats cannot burp evidently. So go figure. And so they can't burp and then they end up just like internally rupturing or something. Yeah, so it's supposed to be an effective <laughs> method. Um, we figure we have all these ingredients on hand. We, we went for it. We started out with these little, like, you know, used yogurt tubs, like a one quart size yogurt tub, little plastic tubs. You know, we'd fill that up, cut the holes in the, um, in the side of the container and filled that up. Um, and we did like three or four of those. Um, and they downed this stuff. Um, but by the morning, it would be empty and the containers would be moved. And we realized, like, we have a bigger scale problem than these tiny little yogurt cup containers can handle. And so then we moved to a five gallon bucket. Yeah, called in the big guns. And so I just took a five gallon bucket with a cover that we had and um, drilled some like three inch holes in near, near the base of that bucket so they could get in and out easy. And that allowed us to put like a whole like big half gallon jar, like several cups of the mixture in at, at once. And that was that seemed to be much more effective. Like that was, you know, if we refilled that every day or every other day, they were never eating through all of that. And um, yeah, so that's that's yeah. where we ended up. So we did that. Um, meanwhile, while we were kind of trying to figure out our rat problem, we weren't quite sure. So one thing about this baking soda method is that it's not an instant fix. It's not like you'll put the step out there. I think that's what we were hoping. Yeah. <laughs> you put the step out there the next day, like they're all dead and gone and you don't have to worry about it. But but that didn't happen. So after about a week of doing the baking soda method, um, we we thought maybe the numbers were going down some, but they were definitely, we were still seeing some rat activity. Um, so we had talked to someone who suggested in a, uh, another option similar to the uh, baking soda method, but it was actually instead of using baking soda, sorry, our chickens are in children nice and loud out here today. Um, instead of using baking soda, we use plaster of Paris in there. So it's the same, a powdery mixture. You put the Paris of plaster, or plaster of Paris in um, kind of a one-to-one -one ratio with your cornmeal or flour and then sugar. Um, and then the idea with the, the Paris of, I keep wanting to call it Paris of plaster, plaster of Paris is that it hardens when it gets wet, like plaster. Um, and so then when they ingest it, it gets in their insides and then pretty quickly within 20 minutes or so, it hardens and kind of uh, clogs them up. Yeah. Not a super pleasant way to go, but you know, we were kind of looking for something that was maybe going to be a little quicker and more effective than the baking soda. Yeah. So so we're, we're like a month into it now and just doing those two, just things. doing those two things, the baking soda and plaster of Paris method. And we're really hopeful. We're not like a hundred percent there yet. There's still rats hanging around, but nothing in comparison to where we were at a month ago. It seems like these steps are working. We had a really bad rat situation. Um, really like the best measure that you can take is to prevent them from coming in the first place. And so like, had we done this several months ago and put these traps out for them, it probably would have just taken care of them when they were just a few in number and it would have solved it right away. We didn't do that. We're, mm -hmm. you know, having to do a lot of hard, dirty work to get them, get them gone, get them out now. But it, it does seem like these methods are working, but they're, like we said, they're not instantaneous. You know, it's not gonna take care of it overnight. So we're gonna stick with it, mm -hmm. get them gone. But there are some other options that you can try that are, you know, from our research, a little bit more effective and instant, quicker. quicker. Yeah, so if you're looking for something that's just gonna kind of take care of the problem, you know, getting an exterminator, getting some sort of poison is probably going to be your quickest, most effective 
method yeah. um, if you want to go that route. Um, which, well, like you know. we said, in a barn, that's a risky move when you have other animals. You know, it's it's probably going to take care of it really quickly, but we just didn't want to take that risk on of other animals getting at a poisoned rat and mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, um, cats, uh, barn cats especially. So I think one of the things we had talked to our neighbors who have cats and we asked like, can we borrow a couple of cats for a while? And they're like, you know, our cats aren't really cutting it. We have a rat problem too. So I'm not really sure that that's gonna do it for you. So that was kind of what we were thinking. But after talking to a few more people, um, I think doing barn cats effectively by actually letting them hunt, maybe not, you know, feeding them a minimum amount so that they are hungry, so that motivated. they want to, yeah, motivated to go out and get your rats. I think barn cats can definitely be an effective method. Um, also terriers or certain dog breeds can also be super effective at getting rid of rats. Yeah, that was kind of a fun one. We came across that in our research that like little terrier dogs are like really effective rat and mouse killers so yeah, um, then, there's there's a couple other methods too that are pretty common like the old farmer method is the the bucket method you take a five gallon bucket or a garbage can it works too and you create some sort of like like spindle on top you could put like a metal bar across the top with like either like a a soda can or like some some sort of spinny thing over that metal bar and you you put um a ramp going up to the top of the bucket and then you put some sort of bait like peanut butter or something on that little spindle they try and go after that bait spin on that thing and fall into the bucket and you also if with the bucket you fill it halfway with water and then that drowns the rats mm -hmm. with the garbage can i think i think they just fall in and so, yeah, they can't, can't get out, can't get out sure. so it just collects them up yeah some sort of bucket trap method trap is pretty there. common yeah um another thing is they have kind of more of a electrocution <laughs> method. There's something called a, a radinator or eradicator. Eradicator. Yeah, yeah. that um, attracts them and then essentially electrocutes them and collects them, kind of zaps them. It's, so It's supposed to be the most like humane method of doing it. Yeah, yeah. so we've I've heard good things from people who have used it, um, but that's one thing. I think they're a little bit pricey to buy this trap, but effective. So... Yeah. Um, so those are some other methods you could try if you are looking to just clear rats fast. But in our experience, if you're looking for something that's maybe a little more cost effective and maybe even just with things that you already have on hand to avoid poison, we would recommend the baking soda method or if you're you know, looking to go one step further with the uh, Plaster of Paris, that could work too. But um, so our plan kind of for the future here, clean out our coop or clean out our barn good, hopefully eliminate some of those um, places that they were hanging out, be more intentional with our coop and even removing food at night and things like that, but then also just keeping a separate bucket um, of this baking soda, cornmeal, sugar mixture out there um, in early, you know, in early winter and fall or even just all the time as a preventative method, method so that we hopefully will avoid getting this accumulation of rats in the future. Yep, yep. And one thing we didn't mention earlier is that supposedly, like it's, it's unique to the anatomy of rats that they can't burp, but with uh, other animals, like I guess would be able to burp or Yeah, like if our chickens expel. got it, it wouldn't be a big deal. Yeah, if, if they got to the baking soda mixture, that they'd be okay. The plaster of Paris is a different case. I think any animal that would eat that would, you know, it not, would not be good. It wouldn't either. go over well. Um, so, so our plan long term is just to keep the baking soda stuff out, and that that's the least risky for if, if other animals happen to get to it to them. All right, you guys. So that's our little dose of real farm life for you. So hopefully rats aren't a huge issue on your farm, but if they are, hopefully you found this helpful. So thanks so much for watching today, and we'll see you next time.